All right, moving on to the season finale of season two. So as usual, the student here is pulled out of frame. So she's Henrietta grabs her, pulls her through the staircase. And while off frame, a blender is turned on and blood is spraying everywhere. But somehow she's still alive when she pokes her head up from the fruit cellar and then is pulled back down again. So somehow she survived losing that, losing that much blood. Doesn't matter. I just always want to know. I've mentioned this in another uh, review here. How? What happens when they're off frame? What is going on down there to fucking warrant so much blood coming up, being spewed like crazy out of out of that darkness? Um, off screen. I just want to know what's going on. I want to see. I want to be able to take the camera and come around and be like, what is happening right now? <laughs> but uh, it probably wouldn't be anywhere near as cool as uh, we can fill our brains in to see. So I don't know. Probably best we don't see. Um, and then Henry had suck the milk out of my tit. Oh my God. This is fucking like Luke Skywalker um, on Octo. <laughs> and him going up and milking that thing and sipping down that green milk. Uh, this is a little grosser. Um, and then we get the giraffe neck Henrietta from uh, Evil Dead 2 here, which is great. It's so cool to see it elongate, come in the face, all morphs, and it looks exactly the same, just like the previous episode. When the giraffe neck Henrietta is what I'm calling her. She probably has a name. I don't give a shit. That's what I'm calling her. Looks identical. It's so cool. Attention to detail. Always appreciate it. Consistency in... Uh, and that stuff is very important to me, so it was it was awesome to see her again. Uh, decapitates Henrietta yet again, and just says, "Fuck you." I don't know why I get so happy when Ash curses in this. I just I don't know. Maybe it was just the Army of Darkness thing where it was all felt PG thirteen, um, <laughs> but it just I don't know. Fist pumps every time. Um, and then Ruby comes in, so we have an eighties Ruby here. And she kills Ruby. And when this happens, Ash takes the book out. And uh, I guess he's changed the past somehow, but he hasn't. If you want to listen to my thoughts on my paradox, I'm not going to re-go over it here. It was way out of control already. And it was in, I think, the previous episode here. Um, so, yeah, he gets his hand back, which was so cool. And I was hoping that he was going to be able to keep his hand. But I guess that's just not Ash, right? So... He does have to lose it again in this same episode, um, which I was kind of bummed out about. I was like, oh, poor Ash, man. He can't keep his hand for more than like 10 minutes. Um, and Pablo is returned, but he, is he? No, yet again, for like the seventh time, Pablo dies again as it's revealed that he is Baal under there. Um, and... <clears throat> When Ruby comes up and she throws the other Ruby's head on the seat and it just lays there and they pan, they pan over to it, it looks gruesome. Good stuff. Um, and as I previously had mentioned in another review, Ball had tricked Ash into going back in time because that's the only way that he could come back. And so Ash challenges Ball to a fight, which, if you think about it, makes no fucking sense at all. Uh, usually with shows like this, you just want to look past that kind of stuff. And I will, but I still got to fucking mention it because it's so silly to me. He could have gotten what Ash is offering on his end of things. Cause Ruby's like, well, what do we get out of it? Cause she, Ash is like, you got to let me and Kelly and, well, and everyone go. And you got to go back down into hell and all this stuff. Also that ball can prove that as a mortal, he can beat Ash up. Um, which is kind of what Ruby points out. She's like, all of this over vanity. But what Ash is offering, like, oh, you can take me and Kelly and all this down into hell and have your way with us and all this stuff. It's like, we can have that anyway. Like, we already have you guys. You don't have any leverage. You don't have anything we need. They're, they don't possess anything anymore. They could have just killed them both right there and been done with it and just continue. Like... There's no point to him to make this blood freaking agreement over the Necronomicon. Like, I'm surprised Ruby wasn't like, fuck no, we're not doing this. This is stupid. We can get all of this stuff anyway. We don't need their permission to take them to hell. Like, I, it makes no sense at all. Why Ball would even agree to it is so beyond me. But as she says, it's just pure 
vanity and arrogance, but I'm not sure why he needs to prove anything to Ash Williams, but he seems to need to, even though I don't know how much he even knows about the guy since he's only really been around him a couple days, as far as we know. Uh, the Dark One is reborn here, so we get them back. Um, and <clears throat> we got a bunch of returns here. Chet makes a return. Cheryl makes a return. Ash's dad makes a return. Of course, none of them are actually there, but it was cool to see all of those actors and actresses. Um, and um, I already mentioned Ash losing his hand. Shame. Uh, Ruby, yet again, is trying to get Kelly on her side, this time for bad reasons. Uh, previously, it was for good reasons. Um, so Ruby just seems to have an affinity for Kelly, no matter what side of the coin she's on, no matter what point of her life she's in. She makes a drastic change from the 80s to now, seeing as how she's been alive for about 5,000 years. So it's a very quick change of events for you. Um, and... <clears throat> Ball is, of course, going to best Ash in combat because he's cheating. He's using powers like he said he wasn't going to because Ruby altered the deal. And uh, Ball takes, or Ash, of course, distracts him long enough to grab his finger and cut him right up the inseam. Falls apart and he is uh, lost. And so the house comes undone and catches fire and everything burns down with him. And out of those ashes, like a phoenix, rises Pablo. A lot of fucking Harry Potter references. Not that a phoenix came from Harry Potter. But since it was on my mind from the Whomping Willow fucking fiasco earlier, uh, of course it's going to connect it. Um, and then, yeah, so Ash and everyone goes back in time, I guess because Pablo still has the wording on him. He understands how to read the Sumerian text to be able to send them into the future because they sure as shit didn't wait. And as I said, we're not going to get into the paradoxes of how the town still knows about what happened previously about Ash killing people and all that stuff because there's he brings it up in his thing and it's like, but you didn't. Shouldn't all of this be erased? Whatever. I guess not. He goes back. He's the town hero. They throw him like a fucking parade. And uh, we, Ash gives this pretty hilarious speech, and we find out that Ruby, the 80s Ruby, who doesn't age, so maybe she actually just waited the whole time, I don't know, is still out there. But yeah, I'd like to know uh, how they got back. I, I, as I said, I, I guess it's just Pablo. But there you go, season two in the books. These notes are useless now. All right, guys, I will get to season three shortly. Um, but now I got to get back to the MCU. Let's go.